Hey gang, thanks for checking out this episode of The Last Frame. In this episode, I wanna show you the prep, the poses, and the lighting that go into shooting one of those classic fitness magazine covers that you see in the supermarket checkout line. Stay tuned. Fitness magazine covers, white background, clean, crisp commercial lighting, three quarter length poses, really fit and sexy subject who looks really happy. Now do you know what I'm talking about? You see these all the time when you're in the checkout line at the supermarket. These shots are actually pretty easy to do with the right gear and planning. So let's talk first about why you would do it or should you do it the next time you're working with a model on his or her portfolio. Now let me be clear, when I say model, I'm referring to someone who is either signed with or planning to sign with an agency in order to get paid professional work. I'm not talking about someone with tattoos on 60% of their body who has a profile on an amateur modeling website and is modeling for fun. Now, if you're a photographer that works with models, this type of fitness shot can serve several purposes in a model's portfolio. It looks like a tear sheet. I'm not suggesting you add a title and words and make a pretend magazine cover. Please don't be that photographer. I'm simply pointing out the psychology. Since the photo looks like one of those shots that you see on the magazines, it has a subliminal effect of making the model look experienced. We're not saying that he or she was actually on a cover. This shot is a great body shot for the model's book. Contrary to what Tyra Banks and Janice Dickinson claimed in their reality TV shows, a model doesn't have to pose nude. In fact, a model doesn't have to pose in lingerie or even a swimsuit if that makes them uncomfortable. From a business perspective, it is an economy of scale. The more things the model is comfortable with, then the more opportunities that may exist. All that said, if you're working with a model that is uncomfortable being photographed in swimwear or lingerie, the fitness shot is a great way to be able to show off body proportions without showing too much skin. It's a great way to show that the model really is in great shape. Action fitness poses are often not the most flattering. Even though this type of shot is commercial and even kind of cheesy, it provides a modeling agency and potential client with a lot of valuable information about the model. A few warnings about doing this kind of shot for a modeling portfolio. A lot of models or potential models will come to you thinking that because they're skinny and they go to the gym regularly, or because they just lost 40 pounds and are working out every day, that they are prime candidates to be fitness models. You know, because they're fit. Fitness models are really fit and very beautiful or handsome. Understand that most fitness models only model for one type of sport or activity. In other words, a person who looks convincing as a weightlifter doesn't look like the models you see doing yoga in the magazines. A person who is a cyclist is probably not built like a volleyball player. And the list goes on. Also understand that those magazine covers that you see in the supermarket, they generally don't have models on the cover. Models don't sell magazines. Famous faces sell magazines. The covers are usually reserved for celebrities. It is your responsibility as a photographer to be honest with your subjects. Don't take their money and let them think that they're going to be a fitness model if they're actually not in great shape or they're still 10 pounds overweight. Now that you've decided to do this shot, you need to discuss outfits with your subject. They need to be solid colors, no prints, no patterns, and no florals. They need to fit well and be flattering. Show off the stomach. If your model feels the need to cover his or her stomach because it still needs a little work, you shouldn't be doing that shot. Props are important, but go easy. This shot is about showing the model's build and personality. Too many props and too much detail will take away from that message. So kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. Of course, you're going to use a makeup artist because you want your model to look his or her best. For the women, if they have a lot of hair, make it full bodied. Even consider using a light fan. Don't make it look like she's in a windstorm, just enough to get a little motion on her hair. Remember, messy hair equals messy picture. If your subject has great muscle definition, have them do a few curls or squats or sit-ups before they walk onto the set. Don't let them overdo it. You don't want them to be sweaty or ruin the hair and makeup. If you want a little sheen to their skin, use the water-based lotion right before they shoot. Water-based lotions like Suave are soaked into the skin quickly so it won't cause you lighting problems and doesn't stain the clothing. 
These shots were done with a clamshell lighting setup. Two 320 watt second Paul C. Buff Alien B B800s mounted in medium sized Photoflex soft boxes. One is placed on the floor in front of the model and the other is on a boom arm in front of and slightly above the model's head. Generally the top strobe should be a little brighter. You do still want a very soft hint of a shadow on the bottom of things like the nose and the jawline so that things look natural. You can see here that I also have two Alien B B800s set on either side of the white background and they're powered to be approximately two stops brighter than the light that is reaching my subject who is posed seven feet in front of the background. Last, I added two more Alien B B800s, one on each side and behind the subject to create the rim lighting that gives these shots a little pop. And in the case of a sideways pose like this one, we'll also add to the muscle definition of the stomach. The rims are only about a half a stop to a stop brighter than the front lighting. This setup also works really well on a black background by simply turning off the two background strobes and using a four light setup. Now take your time and do lots of test shots while setting up your lighting. I said previously that this is a simple lighting setup. It is simple in that it creates a lighting style that is all about the subject, not your lighting. It is difficult in that if you are not careful, your background lights can be too bright, your rims can be too bright or misplaced so that they're making your subject's nose glow, or the bottom box on the clamshell setup can be too bright and causing shadows on tops of things instead of below. So if you have a flash meter, use it. If not, chimp often while testing this setup and even while you're shooting to be sure that things are balanced the way you want them. The mistakes that I just mentioned are difficult to fix in post. Also remember these subjects are attractive and physically fit. Don't shoot down on them and diminish their strength. For three quarter length shots, shoot from just below the eyes. I generally line my lens up right around the collarbone. For full length shots, shoot at the midpoint of the body or slightly lower. Ideally, you want your camera sensor to be parallel to your subject's body so that you are showing them with realistic body proportions. Remember, this shot is about two things, personality and looks. Without props, hands on the hips, above the head, or even on the neck are easy and work great. Keep the legs shoulder width apart and the model can shift their hips a little to the side but not too much. With props, it's not about realism, it's about looking good. Keep the props simple and small and don't let them hide the body. For shots with a model turned to her side, bend the leg closest to the camera to keep the butt curved. If you're gonna have your model sit, turn her slightly. No need to make it a crotch shot. Now you can of course do this with speed lights, and if you're really in a pinch, you could leave out the rim lights and work with one strobe for the background light. It'll take a little more work to set up just right, but it's doable if you have enough space. You can also work with different colored backdrops or add a strobe with gels on the black background for a colored glow if you want to be a little bit more creative. As always, the possibilities are only limited by your own imagination. I hope that sparks some ideas for you. Take this idea and run with it. Go create and show me what you come up with. Don't forget, your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.